mean, if, if you go back to, to the Enlightenment, there, there, there were uh, some of the strains had to do with, uh, in, in fact, this, we're now really talking about the origins of classical liberalism, which anarchism kind of grew out of in a way. But classical liberalism was, uh, say, in uh, Wilhelm von Humboldt, um, parts of Rousseau, uh, Rousseau's Second Discourse, uh, uh, other Enlightenment uh, conceptions, actually goes all the way back to Descartes, it was committed to a conception of uh, human nature as being based on uh, unconstrained uh, creative activity. So, for example, say for Humboldt, uh, his basic, one of the founders of classical liberalism, also the modern education system, also linguistics, in fact, uh, his uh, the picture of, uh, his basic picture was summarized in a phrase in which he said that uh, if a uh, craftsman uh, produces a beautiful work on command, uh, we may admire what he does, but we'll despise what he is, uh, a tool in the hands of others. If the craftsman creates out of his own uh, interest, initiative, uh, commitment, uh, search, then we admire what he is. And the same with a, a child. If a child uh, is treated uh, like, let's say in the schools, like a vessel into which you pour water, uh, maybe the water will come out again in the right form, but uh, it's not education. Uh, what the teacher ought to be doing is, uh, Humboldt's phrase, uh, laying out a thread along which the student progresses in his or her own way uh, from inner impulses. And that relates uh, to immediately to social organization. Follows right away that any uh, acceptable, decent form of social organization ought to be based on, ought to nurture and uh, 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 encourage uh, free creative activity, and that includes uh, self-determination, control of all the decisions that matter in the, uh, in the uh, institution. So it's a kind of like a seamless web, uh, and uh, out of that comes classical liberalism, and as Rudolf Rocker, an anarchist thinker, pointed out, I think pretty accurately, uh, classical liberalism uh, foundered on the shoals of capitalism. When this is pre-capitalist, and when capitalist uh, structures develop, classical liberalism was destroyed. It couldn't, uh, uh, it, its own conceptions of freedom, independence, and creativity were uh, stunted or destroyed by the uh, hierarchical uh, managerial structure that was a core of capitalist, uh, uh, capitalist institutions. And anarchism then would be the, from this point of view, would be the uh, development of the remnants of classical liberalism and conversion of them into uh, 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 ways of thinking and acting in a, a capitalist or post-capitalist society. Anarcho-syndicalism specifically was directed towards the uh, organization of industrial societies. Uh, but so, so I think there's a continuity that goes through. And these irrationalist tendencies that you mentioned uh, essentially try to undercut it from the beginning, from the core of the uh, Enlightenment uh, commitment to rationality, progress, individual creativity, and so on.